Callius grimaced as he sat on a log by the fire, polishing his staff for the tenth time over. More than an hour had passed since he had first conjured the flame in the small clearing of the woods. A tickling sensation had come over his mind shortly thereafter, upon which he did his best to shut it out. He didn't want the reminder of what was coming, but even without it, he couldn't stop from stewing in anger. He prayed to the Maker he could just make it through this mission. Callius hated being alone, but there was something else he hated much, much more, and it was approaching now. He had made marks in the trees leading to his location, so the newly recruited Grey Warden could find him deep in the woods. The sun was just setting over the treetops when he finally began to hear leaves and twigs crunching. He gritted his teeth. Five years as a warden, five years since he had seen one of their kind, and now he was being forced to train it. Callius stilled his mind as the giant figure came through the trees. He felt his body tense as his muscles ordered him to attack it, but his focused mind held them back. The figure was a head taller than Callius, with enormous horns protruding from its forehead. It wore heavy silverite armor, clearly custom-made for its irregular and gigantic body. The large shoulder pieces and breastplates were held together with cords. The bracers made its forearms look even bulkier than its natural, brutish appearance. And engraved on the chest was the Grey Warden insignia of a griffin. It disgusted Callius to his core to see such a beast bearing that symbol of honor. Warden? The brute regarded him in a deep voice. Warden? Callius choked out. Sit. The brute did as it was told and sat on the ground by the fire. Its head was now about even to Callius's on the log. Before we start, I need to know. How many Darkspawn have you fought? I have killed fifty-seven. Fifty-one before I joined the Great Wardens, replied the Oxman. It enunciated each word in a stoic, monotone utterance. Callius noticed the Oxman wasn't meeting his gaze. Look at me. The brute turned its whole head to look at Callius straight. Twenty years ago, that would have chilled Callius to his core. Now his blood boiled, and his hard gaze deepened as though everything around the Oxman was fading away. Let me make something clear, Callius started. I don't like you. I don't want to be here. But the commander ordered me to bring you on this mission to train you, and so we will do this, and then we will be done, and never see each other again. Clear? Yes, came the Oxman. No hint of objection, condescension, hurt, or fear was in his voice. Just that same monotone stoicism. Callius's nose scrunched. He didn't even realize he had wanted a reaction out of this thing until he didn't get one. He planted his staff on the ground and stood up. Come with me, he ordered lazily, and he rolled his eyes as he turned his back to the brute. Callius led the way to a small pond at the bottom of a cliff. He repeatedly looked back at the monster behind him who kept ducking below branches as they made their way through the woods. Having the creature behind him caused his grimace to deepen, his fists to clench, and the muscles in his back to tighten. Though he continued moving to their destination, his eyes kept pressing to the sides, trying in vain to see behind him. He tried not to turn back too much. He didn't want the creature to think it unnerved him, but he couldn't help himself. The journey wasn't long, less than five minutes from the campsite. It would have been half as long if not for the terrain and growth. The wardens had cut a path when they came through at last, but it seemed the wilds had undone their work in only a week's time. They finally arrived at the pond, and across the water, in the face of the cliff, was the small entrance to the cave. Upon seeing it again, Callius stifled a laugh. The cave was so small the brute would have a hard time fitting in. Callius was sure he could do it, but it would be a struggle, especially in that armor. The footsteps of the brute behind him grew louder until Callius could feel it just steps away. Then they ceased. Callius decided to ignore the beast for a moment and crouched by the water. It wasn't really a pond, he thought. It was more like a huge puddle. There wasn't even anything alive in it. He dipped his fingers in the water and moved them through, getting a feel for the temperature and the texture. 
Kellius stood and stilled his mind, preparing to draw energy from the Fade to cast his spell, not even caring to warn the monster behind him. With an intake of air, he gestured his arms in a circle. Blue-white energy appeared in his hands, and he thrust them forward at the water. Swiftly, the still pond turned to solid ice from the surface to the bottom. It wasn't strictly necessary to freeze at all, but they were more than likely heading into battle, and the last thing Callius needed was him or his trainee getting water soaked through their boots. He had seen discomfort get soldiers killed. He had even used it to his advantage in the past, fighting the Canari and Saharan. Soggy feet, itchy eyes, an upset stomach. Things like that made people sloppy, and there was always an advantage in that. This way, Callius grunted. Callius carefully tread across the ice to the entrance to the cave. He crouched and gripped the sides as he pushed his feet through. The rest of him followed shortly after, falling a short distance to reach the bottom. Stretched ahead was a tunnel only barely illuminated by the small amount of sunlight coming in through the tiny opening. He made another gesture of his hands and focused his mind, this time creating tiny orbs of blue-white light and sending them all over the walls of the cavern. A stream of water had ceased when Callius froze the pond, but he could still see the residue left over. It led down the rocks to another pond at the bottom, this one far smaller but deeper than the one on the surface. It would be easy enough to step around as they went through to their destination. Callius looked back up at the hole, not wanting to miss what was sure to be an amusing sight of an enormous beast trying to squeeze through the tiny opening. The brute looked confused for a minute as he studied it, and Callius suppressed a hearty chuckle. After a moment, the brute sat and scooted forward so his legs hung down from the hole. Callius heard grunting and saw the brute thrash and wiggle to fit through, until he finally came down and landed ungracefully. Callius erupted in laughter at the clumsy sight. He leaned forward and held his stomach to keep himself from falling. His eyes were squeezed shut as the fit of laughter continued. When it finally began to die down, he heard the deep voice of the brute. Why do you laugh? The creature asked plainly. The laughter halted more rapidly when Callius heard that. His stomach twisted in anger. Oh, how silly of me to think I might actually find something to enjoy about this mission, Callius thought to himself. Because that was funny, he said coldly and rolled his eyes. Callius and the brute stared at each other for a moment, until Callius saw the corner of the brute's lips twitch up into the subtlest smirk he had ever seen. Callius opened his mouth to say something, but then the brute began to chuckle. Then the chuckle grew into a full, hearty laugh. Mirroring what Callius had done a moment ago, he clutched his stomach to keep from falling. Callius stood there completely at a loss. He realized he had never seen or even imagined a canary laughing. The laugh lasted only a moment before dying down. The brute straightened his back, his lips now in a huge, amused grin. Oh, you should see the look on your face, the brute chuckled out. Callius wanted to be angry, but his mind seemed so confused he was unable to react at all. He just kept analyzing that bizarre event over and over, struggling to reconcile what he had just seen with reality. Should we continue? the brute asked him. Callius refocused his sight on the brute's face, and suddenly broke out of his confused trance. The brute's face had once again become stoic, causing Callius to wonder if he had truly just imagined the laughter. He shook himself to remain in the moment and turned back to the tunnel ahead. Yes, this way, he choked out. The pair descended further into the cave. The structure they were looking for wasn't far, but it was deep. They took their time, slowly and carefully climbing down the steep inclines of the cave. Callius summoned more magical light to the tunnel as they went deeper. Callius couldn't stop dwelling on what he had seen back near the entrance. Finally, the pair entered into an enormous cavern, and at the center were ancient dwarven pillars lining an angled basin that went beneath the rock, a dwarven aqueduct. A thousand years ago, these caves would flood, and the dwarves used this system to bring water down into their old city, a taig. But sometime in the thousand years since the Dwarven Empire fell, 
Something happened. These caves don't flood nearly as often anymore. Callius couldn't say why, and he never cared to ask anyone that might know. What mattered now was that the old aqueduct was now their way into the Dwarven City. Callius and the Beast carefully descended the aqueduct. The ceiling wasn't as high as most Dwarven constructs were, but it was mercifully just high enough to fit the giant without scraping his horns on the ceiling. It still hunched slightly just in case, though. The structure was cracked in a few places, but nowhere was it completely crumbled. The dwarves built their structures to last. It was nearly half an hour of walking in silence that might have been peaceful if not for the Canari's footsteps beside and behind Callius. He wore a perpetual scowl the whole way. Eventually, they got close enough to see the end, and it was at that point that Callius's senses began to tingle. Darkspawn were at the end of the tunnel. Before Callius could voice this to warn the brute, it spoke for itself. I sense Darkspawn at the end of the tunnel. Callius spared him an annoyed glance. Yes, so do I. We are Grey Wardens, he explained slowly. Callius himself was about to say the same thing, and so he almost felt guilty ridiculing the Canari that way. But there was no point dwelling on it. They just continued to walk. Callius came to recognize the types of darkspawn at the end of the tunnel. There were only a dozen herlocks around the pipe. Eight to one side, four on the other. He could also see the basin of the pool the aqueduct was meant to lead out to, now completely dried up. As they walked, Callius formulated a plan. Thirty steps from the end, he held up his arm to halt the creature with him. All right, Canari, listen up. He began. He began. The Canari mumbled something in response. Callius couldn't make out what it was, only that it was in the Canari language. What? Callius snapped. Talvishoth, the beast replied. I am no Canari. The Kune is a lie. Talvishoth was the Canari word for those that had abandoned their religion. Most of them became savage, hardly more than animals. Callius had fought many on Saharan. But they also skirmished with the Canari that they were once a part of. Callius had resolved long ago to simply be glad they were causing problems for the Canari, but that didn't make him like them. They were still beasts, and just like the Canari, they were a plague to be eradicated. A stain on Thetis. Not unlike the Darkspawn, now that he thought of it. But this one had shown emotion, and it had shown intelligence in recognizing the stupidity of the Kune. So he's not completely wretched, Callius thought. Callius thought. But it didn't matter. The beast was still just a beast, unworthy of the armor he wore. Fine, Talvishoth. Callius grimaced at the words. Their language felt dirty in his mouth. There are twelve of them. Four on one side, eight on the other. We'll deal with the four first. I'll hit them with fire and create a wall of ice to hold the others back. Then we finish them off and turn around. Understood? Yes, sir. Sir. A very human word to hear. It was odd hearing it from the thing. Almost as distasteful as speaking their language was for him but Sir was at least respectful. Callius dropped out of the aqueduct and into the basin. He immediately turned to his right to face the group of four herlocks. He hurled a large fireball at one, then sent a wave of fire at the rest. He quickly turned and conjured a wall of ice in front of the eight herlocks on the other side, then turned back. He continued to pepper them with tiny blasts of fire. The Talvishoth had dropped as well and was climbing out of the empty pool up to the weakened herlocks. He had drawn his enormous greatsword and spun it faster than Callius could believe. Chop, chop, chop. He cut through the weakened herlocks one by one, tossing their bodies to the side as he pushed forward in a flurry. Callius was surprised by how quickly the Talvishoth had dispatched them, but he couldn't forget the others. He turned back. The herlocks were moving around either side of the ice wall and jumping into the basin with him. He began to step back carefully, conjuring a wave of ice at the cluster to the right, hoping to weaken them and slow them down. He was running out of energy as he continued to step back. He continued to pepper the group on his left with tiny balls of fire. He didn't have the energy for more. They were getting closer, but in a flash, something grabbed his shoulder and hoisted him up onto the edge of the pool. 
Before he could think, the Talvashoth jumped down and began chopping on the hurlocks like a whirlwind. A few blows were blocked with his sword, but others collided with his armor. The beast shrugged them off and continued to chop away. Kalius's energy returned, and he stood. He summoned all he could and released it into chain lightning, a shock jumping from one hurlock to the next, stunning them for just a moment. The Talvashoth took advantage and swept through them like a wave. And then it was over. The Darkspawn were all dead. A few were completely decapitated. Darkspawn blood sizzled on the ground and on the Talvashoth's armor. The two caught their breath. Kalius could still sense more Darkspawn further away, but no more in the immediate area. With a moment to think, he took in his surroundings. The pool split off in several directions from the mouth of the aqueduct, sending water through small canals that spread down each side of the road. The canals were covered by grates, and old dwarven homes lined the walls behind them, where the duct had come from. The pool also emptied from the center into another pool on the level below. The old city was arranged on three levels cascading down. Tiny tubes of lava still illuminated many of the walls of the buildings. The dwarves built their structures to last. There weren't many darkspawn in here. Callius wasn't sure why. They usually liked to make nests in old dwarven forts and cities, but their presence here was minimal. Might actually make a good base for the wardens, Callius thought. The problem with that was that even the ancient dwarves couldn't keep the darkspawn back. As soon as the Wardens moved in, the Darkspawn would try to overrun it again. It wasn't worth the effort. Callius looked at the Talvashoth, who was now staring back at him. Callius sighed. Well done, he said. Credit where it's due. Callius and the Brute continued through the Tag, avoiding Darkspawn as they went. They stayed low and out of sight. The Darkspawn could sense their presence, but by moving fast, staying low, and sticking to tight passages, they were able to stay out of fights. They knew that the more they fought, the more Darkspawn would likely follow. Most of the buildings were crumbled. Callius felt strange as they moved, like he was trespassing. He supposed he was, in a sense. But they were moving through a place that had once been home to thousands, and was now a ghost town. Anger at the Darkspawn boiled within him. They finally came within sight of the building they were after, the Shaperit. Akin to a library or historical archive, the dwarven Shaperit recorded information in stone using lyrium. Memories, they called them. They were supposed to be permanent, but the dwarves knew how to erase certain inconvenient records. As Callius understood it, that was rare. The Shaperit was like a vault of knowledge, and the knowledge he was after would be there. The entrance was cut directly into the stone wall of the cavern. An enormous, decorated image of the head of a dwarf jutted out above the gigantic doors. Callius found himself impressed by the sheer scope of it, and also that it was still standing. It looked like it should have fallen ages ago. But while the structure impressed him, part of him wondered why dwarves built these doors to be at least five times taller than they were. It didn't matter. Callius and the Talvashoth hid in the mouth of an alley, just a short road to the Shaperit. Callius could sense no darkspawn inside, but many were moving around them. Our best chance is to rush inside, he whispered. What if it's locked? the brute asked. It's not. The darkspawn would have broken it down if it was, Callius answered. Though as the words escaped him, he wondered why it would be closed. Someone must have closed it on their way out, but why take the time? They'll see us. If we lock the door, they'll surround it, probably break it down, the brute replied. Callius didn't spare him a glance. I have a plan. A herlock and two genlocks wandered across the road, directly in the way of the building. The genlocks resembled tiny gorillas. They walked on all fours, their arms enormous compared to their legs. Though shorter than herlocks, they were far stronger on average. Cut down the genlock on the left. I'll take the others. Got it? Understood, the brute said. Callius held up his hand, signaling for the brute to wait. A short moment passed as the darkspawn moved into just the right spot. Now, he quietly ordered. The two rushed towards the door, weapons drawn. Callius readied a spell as he approached his targets. A great burst of power sent the herlock flying back several feet and throwing the genlock off balance. Callius quickly followed that up with a stream of fire. The genlock thrashed and let out a guttural screech of pain. 
Kelly has turned back and saw the brute stab clean through the other genlock and maneuver around it in a blur, withdrawing his blade and slashing back to remove the creature's head. Kelly's eyes grew wide. The stream of fire ceased, and the two pushed forward to the door. They reached it, but Darkspawn in the area had noticed. But Darkspawn in the area had noticed and were rushing towards them. Kellyus could feel that in his mind. They pushed on the door together, and it just barely moved. It must have been like that for centuries. The Darkspawn still approached. Ground yourself, he, Kellyus insisted. He focused and let out another burst of forceful energy. The doors trembled in response, and dust rained down from the giant bust overhead. The Talvashoth remained still. Try it again! They pushed on the doors, and this time they were more willing to give way. Together they slid one of them open just enough to slip through, but the Darkspawn were almost upon them. Several Herlocks and Genlocks were rushing at them. Get in! Callius shouted, and the brute wasted no time squeezing himself through. Callius summoned more energy and let out a spray of ice spikes that erupted from the ground in a cone shape towards the approaching monsters. He stepped back and squeezed through the opening. The moment he was through, the brute slammed the door closed again. You shook it loose for them as well, the brute stated. They'll break through soon. Callius wanted to defend himself. He wanted to scold the brute for speaking to him, the senior warden, in such a way. But he was out of breath, and the brute wasn't wrong. There must be a lever in here somewhere. A locking mechanism. All buildings like this do. Callius thought aloud as he began to frantically search. It was too soon to enact his plan, but he couldn't see a lever anywhere. It should have been right by the door. He could hear Darkspawn just on the other side. He grunted in frustration. The brute wouldn't hold the door forever. He looked at it again. The frame of the door had no lever, but it did have a button at the height of his waist. With little choice, Callius slammed his palm against it. Nothing happened. Callius looked to the other side and saw another button. Why would the dwarves design it like this? He exclaimed. Canari! There's a button on the frame there. Press it! The brute looked at him, then at the door, then at the frame on his side. He pressed off the door and quickly maneuvered to the button. Callius pressed his at the same time. They heard hissing and creaking and then a panel on the floor lowered and slid beneath another. A lever was there. Callius wanted to question why, but he just lunged at it and pulled with all his might. It was a lot easier than he expected, and he ended up falling over. There was rumbling around the door, and enormous bars began to stretch out over it horizontally and vertically. Finally, the pair could catch their breath. Callius pulled a small vial out of a pocket inside the breast of his robe. The lyrium glowed bright, and he could feel the subtle hum as he stared at it. He uncorked it and chugged the potion down to restore his mana. The brute was also breathing heavily. As Callius saw that, he relaxed a bit, as if a weight had been lifted from his shoulders. He wasn't sure why, and his brow furrowed as he considered it. He pushed the thought from his mind. The door still wouldn't last forever. He could sense the darkspawn outside. There were dozens of them, but no ogres. He was thankful for that. Ogres were gigantic, hulking beasts of immense strength. When darkspawn needed to break through strong walls, it was usually the ogres that could do that in seconds. But enough genlocks, or genlock alpha, could do the trick as well. Alphas were usually larger, stronger, and more intelligent than their common brethren. Callius reached out in his mind, but couldn't tell if there were any alphas or not. An older warden might be able to, but not him. Callius looked up at the ceiling. It was high enough to do what he wanted, but they had to wait. First, they needed to get what they were after. Callius looked around the room. He could see signs that Darkspawn had been there. Blight essence had accumulated on the stone in some places, forming a disgusting black slime. It reminded Callius of moss or fungus, but looking at this stuff made him wretch. He saw effigies and crude fortifications, indicating that they had once had a hard-fought battle here, likely many centuries ago. But Callius found himself wondering again why the Darkspawn hadn't occupied this place more than they had. 
The doors weren't locked, and they weren't broken. There were even relatively few in the taiga itself. Usually, they like to make nests in places like this. But for some reason, this place was left mostly alone. Something was wrong. That's all he could tell for certain. After finally catching their breath, Callius straightened and began to walk further into the structure. Come on. He ordered the brute. He didn't look back for him. The entrance hall split off into three directions. Arches marked hallways to the left, right, and at the center of the far wall. In the front of the far archway was a huge stone tablet that resembled a the desk of a receptionist. That must be what this room was for, Gallius thought. His commander told him he'd find what he needed in a secret room, only accessed by a series of switches. But of course he couldn't be more specific. Gallius rolled his eyes and went towards the far hall. We're looking for switches, buttons, levers, that sort of thing. Let me know what you find. Yes, sir, the brute answered. Kellius's muscles tensed. The hallway led to another huge room, but this one at least justified its space. Rows of bookshelves were on every wall, and stairs led up to a second level with even more. Huge tables stretched out in front of him. Kellius imagined they used those for studying whatever tomes they retrieved from the shelves. But despite the good use of space, the room was eerily empty. The bookshelves held no books. He spotted no stone tablets. A mural was embedded in the far wall. He decided he would check that in a moment. Besides that, only three huge carvings remained on the floor. Moved, but not taken. Scavengers, Callius mumbled. They were too far from Orzammar for the army to have recovered the tomes themselves. Whoever it was had to come from the surface. The tomes probably made their way back to Orzammar eventually. They were willing to pay the most for knowledge recovered from old tigs. But whoever stole them were just opportunists. Callius prayed the information he was after was still intact. It was entirely possible the Darkspawn had destroyed it, like they did everything else. But Warden Intelligence said this particular information was hidden, and that the Darkspawn couldn't have found it. Callius had asked his commander how he knew that, and all the old dwarf said was, You wouldn't understand. When Callius asked why no Dwarven Grey Wardens were going on this mission, he completely refused to answer. The Wardens were secretive, even with their own members. Callius had gotten used to that, but he got the feeling that in this case it had to do more with the Dwarves than Wardens. His commander had come from the Dwarven capital of Orzammar. He often told stories of fighting in the army like his father, and how his mother was a historian of the Orzammar Shaperit. He liked to tell stories of the glory days of the Dwarven Empire, before the Darkspawn had taken it all. Callius looked back at the brute, dutifully searching like Callius had told him. He began to wonder if he was really worth hating. He still didn't trust him at all, and he still wanted to get through this as fast as possible and get away from him. But he was tired now. He didn't feel like being angry anymore. Found something, the brute shouted. Callius gritted his teeth at the sound of that voice. Vanitas, why can't you just stay quiet? Callius didn't want to be angry anymore. He wanted to let this go and finish the mission. But he couldn't. The anger held on to him like a vice. It stained his being as much as the blight. He looked at the monster again and his muscles tensed. Fuck you, he thought. What is it? Callius grumbled. A button on the wall divider thing between bookshelves. Kellius would have found that amusing from anyone else. He just turned away and began to walk towards the other side of the room. Press it. See what happens. He didn't actually expect anything to happen after the incident with the door, but it was worth a try. Sure enough, he heard the click of the button, but nothing else. The dwarves liked symmetry and he bet there was another button on the bookshelf on the opposite wall. He reached it and began searching. Without thinking, he called back, Which shelf is it on? This one, the brute called back. Callius turned and grimaced, and the beast looked back at him, grinning. The oxman stifled a chuckle and then burst out into another fit of laughter. The beast was clutching his stomach, and after a second, Callius found himself grinning at the sight and let out a few chuckles himself. 
His mind struggled to comprehend what was happening, even as his body laughed along with the beast. The laughter from the beast began to die down, and Callius quickly forced himself to follow. But the beast kept his smile. Third from the bottom, he said. Callius noticed his own lips still curled upwards, and forced them down as he turned to look at the shelf. Sure enough, there was another button. He called back. There's another one over here. Press them on the count of three. One, two, three. They pressed them, and again nothing happened. Did you press yours? Callius called back. Yes, the brute called. Callius remembered the times he had told people on three, and for some reason they thought that meant he would count to three and then say go. He clenched his teeth thinking about those people. I said on three, not on go, he thought angrily to himself. He grumbled. Find something to lean against the button. Break some stone if you have to. Then do the same over here. I'm going to keep looking. Yes, sir, the brute replied, and dutifully began searching for something to hold the button down. Kellius continued looking around the room. There were two enormous statues of armored dwarves on either side, two poles with glowing crystals on top, not uncommon for dwarves. He saw a bookshelf that was already broken and crumbled for some reason, and a table sitting in front of a huge, carved mural in the wall. Kellius couldn't make out what the image was supposed to be, but he could see Lyrium engraved in it now. It reminded him of a river on a map, except perfectly straight and splitting at right angles. The mural was in the wall, so that explained why no one had taken it before now. But based on the bizarre button-pressing puzzle to find what he was after, he suspected there may be a clue. Kellius looked at the base of the image to find an inscription, only to see that it was all written in ancient dwarven. He rolled his eyes. Why did they send me? Hardly anyone knew the old dwarven language, even the modern dwarves of Orzammar. But surely they could understand it better than him. He looked back at the brute, who was leaning a broken slab of rock against the button Kellius had pressed before. Hey, Talvashoth, he called. He didn't expect he would be of any help, but it was worth asking, as he had no better ideas. The brute looked at him. Can you read Dwarven? Callius asked. The language? A little, the brute replied. Callius's eyes squinted at the answer. He opened his mouth to ask how, but he decided it wasn't worth it. Instead, he said, come over here, see if you can read the inscription. The brute dutifully came over and leaned forward to read the inscription at the base of the mural. He studied it for a moment. It says something about the stone and ancestors protecting something. That made sense. The dwarves revered the stone, the living embodiment of the earth around them. They believed their dead souls returned to the stone to strengthen it, and prayed to them. Kellius remembered the statues on either side of the room. Check that statue over there, Kellius ordered the brute pointing to the statue on the far side from him. Kellius ran to the opposite statue. No sooner had he reached it, something tickled in his mind. He sensed more darkspawn arriving at the door. He focused on the sensation, trying to determine what they were. Then his eyes went wide. Alphas. Two Genlock Alphas. That door wouldn't hold for much longer. We need to hurry! Kellius shouted to the brute. Have you not been hurrying? The brute called back. Kellius would have snapped back at any other time, but not now. There was no time. He frantically searched the statue, looking for anything out of place. He couldn't find anything on the surface, but feeling around, he noticed there was some space between the bottom of the statue's chestplate and the body of it beneath. He couldn't see, but he reached his hand in and felt around. It felt dirty, as if he was actually reaching into someone's armor and feeling their skin. But he didn't have time to dwell on it. He kept feeling around until he finally grasped something. A lever. He pulled it and heard a loud clang coming from the floor beneath him and wall beside him. There's a lever under the armor. Is there one over there? He called to the brute. Kellius released his grip on the lever and it began to sink back into place. He grabbed it again to hold it out. I got it, the brute shouted. Kellius heard another loud clang on the other side of the room. Then the mural on the wall began to vibrate and it retracted further into the wall, causing dust to rain down. The mural began to rise and vanished behind the wall above it. 
Callius wasn't sure if it would hold, but he released the lever and sprinted to the new opening. He wanted to yell and scream at the dwarves who designed this place, but now his focus remained squarely on his mission. He climbed inside the opening, but halted at what he saw inside. He had expected a stone tablet with information, or a rune, or any kind of dwarven artifact. But what he saw instead was a tiny crate, small enough to carry in one arm if needed. But it was enchanted, covered in lyrium runes. He recognized them. Some were for endurance. Dwarves would use them on their buildings or armor to keep them intact under great stress and over long periods of time. But most of the runes were for magical suppression. Now he understood. He understood why the dwarves had such a complicated lock for this chamber. It wasn't to protect what was inside. It was meant to protect themselves from it. Maybe they couldn't destroy it, or maybe they were going to study it, or transport it somewhere else for study. He also understood why the commander sent him and no dwarves. He must have known what was in the crate, and suspected dwarves wouldn't know what to do if anything went wrong. But a mage might. But a mage might. And in an emergency, dwarves might not get out of the tide fast enough. That's why they sent the Canari. He was strong and fast. He still didn't know why they didn't send more protection, and though he suspected opening the box might yield some answers, if the dwarves were this afraid of it, it was best to keep it closed. He backed out of the cramped chamber, pulling the box with him. The Talvashoth had come to meet him. Callius handed him the crate. You have to carry this. It'll suppress my magic if I'm too close to it. The pair returned to the entrance, the door rumbling and shaking from the darkspawn pounding it from the other side. Callius couldn't tell precisely how many there were, but he estimated somewhere around forty just beyond the door, and many others farther away, spread throughout the taig. Same as before, except now they were on alert. Callius looked up to above the door, where the wall met the ceiling. He reached into his robe and pulled out a glowing blue vial, a lyrium potion to increase a mage's mana. He uncorked it and turned back to the Telvishoth, staring him in the eyes. When you see a chance, run back to the aqueduct and escape. If I fall behind, do not wait for me. Do not come back for me. Get that box back to the Wardens. That's an order. The Telvishoth glanced at the rumbling door and back to Callius. He nodded. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. His voice was almost somber, Callius thought. Callius brought the vial to his lips and drank the whole thing down, then placed it back in his robe. He closed his eyes and took three long breaths, focusing on the sensation of the air filling his lungs. The pounding on the door grew quiet and distant. Slowly, his eyes opened, and he focused his sight on the wall above the door. Open the lock, he said. Callius felt the Telvashoth hesitate without even looking at him, but he obeyed the order and went to the lever. Callius concentrated the energy within his body, and summoned it up through his arms and up at the wall with all his might. A huge blast of magical energy rushed up to the wall, causing the whole thing to rumble. Now! Callius shouted and let out another blast. The door's locks began to retract, and the darkspawn continued to pound. They were close. Callius let loose another blast, and another, and another. Finally, the doors broke and fell forward into the room. In the dust, the first darkspawn showed themselves, as the final blast hit the wall. In the dust, the first darkspawn showed themselves, as the final blast hit the wall. Suddenly, rocks began to fall on the invading darkspawn, crushing them as they rushed towards the door. Callius panted and reached into his robe to pull out another vial of lyrium. He uncorked it and shouted, Go now! He pressed the vial again to his lips and downed the whole thing in a second. The Talvashoth ran through the dust, hopping over debris as Callius cast fire and lightning around him to cover his escape. Most of the Darkspawn focused on the Talvashoth, so Callius ran forward to continue to cover him. He ran, casting four spells to push away any Darkspawn that got too close. He didn't have to kill them, he just had to keep up and cover the other warden as best he could. The Talvashoth also evaded most of the Darkspawn, tossing some to the side with his free hand, and keeping the box clutched tightly as he charged through the old Dwarven city. Callius struggled to keep up, especially when they started going uphill. He cast a spell to propel him faster, chilling Darkspawn along the way. It helped a little, but not enough. The Telvashoth reached the top and kept going, and Callius could no longer see him, and that meant he couldn't cover him. Callius struggled to reach the top. 
More Darkspawn closed in on him, and his Force spells couldn't keep enough of them away. The Darkspawn would pile onto him soon enough. He stopped moving up the hill and focused his mind. He summoned all the energy he could afford to spare into a vortex of fire around him. Darkspawn burned as they tried to reach him, and others stayed back, waiting for the vortex to end. Callius couldn't do it forever, and he didn't know if the Talvashoth had escaped. As soon as he ran out of mana, the vortex would fail, and he would be done for. So with the last of his magic, knowing it would likely be the last spell he cast, he focused his mind out, and the vortex spread farther from him in a burst of energy. All the darkspawn near him were pushed away and burned. Callius summoned the last of his stamina and climbed to the top of the hill. He did not see the Talvishoth, but he did see another enormous horned figure. An ogre. This is it, Callius thought. This is how I die. Callius could feel other darkspawn nearby. He didn't have the mana to fight them or the stamina to run past them. Other wardens have been known to reach out to demons in situations like this and allow themselves to be possessed to take out as many darkspawn as possible with them. But Callius refused to die like that. He would not surrender to a demon. He would not surrender to the darkspawn. He would die proudly as himself. Callius straightened himself into a fighting stance. His mana was slowly recovering, and he had no time to pull out another lyrium potion. He was surrounded. The ogre pounded the ground and Callius could see it getting ready to charge. Callius prepared another fireball to at least make the beast stumble. That's when the Telvishoth roared and appeared from behind the ogre, slashing at it with his greatsword. Callius had no time to be angry. He reached into his robe and pulled out the last lyrium potion. He downed it and turned his attention to the other approaching darkspawn. Flashes of lightning and fire filled the cavern. One after another, Callius hit every darkspawn he could see, he maneuvered closer to the Talvashoth, who was still slashing at the giant ogre with all his might, skillfully evading the monster's swipes back. Callius called forth the last bit of mana he had into a spell of chain lightning, striking every darkspawn in the vicinity. The ogre trembled in shock, and the Talvashoth forced his sword up into the creature's abdomen. He released his grip without even trying to pull it out, and he grabbed Callius by the arm and pulled him with him. The pair began running again they could see the aqueduct. Callius saw the box on the ground as they approached, and the Talvashoth bent down to pick it up and kept on running. They finally reached the mouth of the aqueduct, and the darkspawn swarmed around them. Callius knew he couldn't reach it, so he turned to face them. I'll hold them! Go! But this time, the Talvashoth ignored his order. Instead, he took hold of him, hoisted him onto his shoulder, and launched him up onto the aqueduct. Then reached down, picked up the box, and threw that up, too. The Talvashoth jumped and grabbed the aqueduct to pull himself up, but Darkspawn approached too quickly. The box was right next to Callius, and he found himself unable to cast spells. With no other options, he took his staff and began stabbing at the faces of the approaching Darkspawn, as the Talvashoth used all his might to pull himself up to Callius. As he got up, Callius felt his staff be pulled from his grasp. The Talvashoth grabbed his robe and pulled him back from the edge, he picked up the box and continued to run. Callius considered what to do. He could cast spells to keep them from following. They would have a hard time getting up there, but they wouldn't give up. The stone around him was too sturdy to collapse, so he just ran with the other warden. They climbed and climbed. They heard the darkspawn snarls and groans grow faint. Their pace slowed greatly as they moved up to the surface. Both of them struggled with labored breaths to keep moving, but with no words, they encouraged each other forward. Callius lit the way once again with tiny, magical lights. Finally, they came to the top. Callius knew he would have to collapse this cave to keep the darkspawn from reaching the surface this way. Even if Callius and the Talvashoth escaped, they couldn't let them use this tunnel. They climbed the slick rocks again and looked up at the hole they had dropped down from. The pond was still iced over, and they could see by the sky that the sun was almost fully set. Looking up at the hole, Callius realized that if he had died down there, the Talvashoth would be stuck here until more wardens showed up. That would probably be the next day, but still. Callius considered staying in the cave for the night, but that wouldn't be safe with the darkspawn coming. He decided he would rest for a moment, then use magic to reach the hole 
and then seal this place in. He would have to camp for the night with the Talvishath. Kellius went to a wall of the cave and sat down. He could sense the Darkspawn were still a good distance away. Give me a moment, and we'll get out of here, he said. The Talvishath sat down next to him. Take your time, he said. The two sat there for a long moment. Kellius was far too tired to be mad about anything. I told you not to come back for me, he said breathlessly. The Talvishoth turned to look at him, but Kellius stared straight ahead. The Talvishoth said nothing, and turned his head away again. Thank you, Kellius whispered. This time, they both looked at each other. The Talvishoth again said nothing. And I'm sorry for the way I treated you. Callius looked directly into the man's eyes. Warden. Hey guys, thank you all so much for listening. If you made it all the way to the end, uh, you are amazing. Uh, you're amazing even if you didn't, but you're not going to hear this, so, you know. Uh, so I've been working on this for a while, and I got some other uh, fanfiction-like projects going on that I'm really excited to share with you guys. And if you want to show your support, uh, you can donate over on Patreon, uh, like this video, and leave a comment. Both those things really help out a lot. And yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be about it. And I'm not sure what else to say. Just uh, thank you guys so much for listening, and uh, I'll see you later.